power to. What you honor, you give power to. Amen. We honor the Holy Spirit this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He wants to do a powerful work in and through us. He wants your sins to be forgiven. He wants to purify you. He wants to fill you. And he wants to do a work in you that you couldn't even think or imagine what God's wanting to do in you this very morning but he wants to be honored Hallelujah. he wants to show you truth and he wants to pour out his spirit but as I wrestled with God for today we, we ran up to Sam's Club on Friday and when I pulled in to get gas I looked at the car in front of me and outside their license plate the emblem said Jesus is Lord and you know I was praying for them and grateful for them and, and then I noticed the pump open and the lady didn't pull forward and so I pulled up to the side and, and so I pulled in front of her and then she pulled up behind me and she got out of the vehicle and I was driving the, the red church van that says love God and love people and she just was coming at me in, in open arms, this strange older lady, and we just started praying in the Holy Ghost. And I felt heaven come down. In fact, when we embraced, we slammed into the van, and I thought I was going to fall out in the spirit. And I had my grandson in the van, and, and we just, and people... You know, today when you do something, people just pull their phones out. When I was in the realm of the spirit, and when I started to come to, I looked and people were, you know, because they were seeing something very abnormal. Amen. And she told me, she said, um, she said, my name is Kadesha, and she said, I was Muslim. And she said, I... I met a man, and she said he was from East Liverpool, she even told me his name, and brought her from Morocco, and brought her back here, and she said, we got married, and she said, then one day he left me for another man, and she said he, he went and, and committed suicide and killed himself, and I felt like that's what I was going to do. And she said, I clumb up this mountain. She said, I took this rope and I began to tie the knot to hang myself. And I seen something coming from the sky was coming to me. And she said, it was the Lord Jesus. Amen. And he come and he appeared to me and he told me that he loved me and he died for me. And I gave my heart that very moment to him and realized that Christianity was truth and I've been serving him ever since. Amen. What, a, what a powerful story. She told me that she went to Victory Church in Coinsville and, and she said she'd been serving the Lord ever since. So very, very powerful. But when, when she came, here's, you know, a strange lady that I got my hands on. I'm totally embraced with her. And it's that's just something today you can't do those kind of things. But it was but I knew but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, bear witness as we both prayed in the Holy Ghost that I felt like I was in a Holy Ghost church service. I felt like it was heaven. And and I want to tell you the same Holy Spirit wants to do something in you this morning. Yeah. We're reminded that he's our lover. Yeah. Yeah. He's our friend. Yes, Jesus. He's yeah. our teacher. Yeah. He's yeah. our guide. Yeah. When you gave your heart to Jesus, Jesus' blood washed you. Yeah. He washed you for the Holy Spirit yeah. to come on the inside yeah. of you. God yeah. tabernacled you. Amen. Yeah. 
and he tabernacled you or purified you so he could live in you, so you could live a life just like the Son of God. Amen. Now, we limit that because we think it's just holiness, but it's also the power. That's the power that the church has been given. Yeah. He's your comforter. Jesus told us when he comes, he'll bring things to your remembrance. What's he going to bring? The truth that's in you. Yeah. He'll pull those things out of you that, that's been in you. It, it, it's like he just sharpens you yeah. as he, he shows you things. Jesus says when he has come, he'll guide you into those truths. He won't speak of himself. And, and he'll show you. He will show you. Ask him to show you the things that are to come. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Amen. He'll, he'll, he'll give you a dream or he'll give you a vision and, and he's going to prepare you for, for the things that are about to come. So don't be alarmed by what all the reports are. Just trust the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Because if something was going to take place, he would show that to you because that's the promise. Jesus gave us these words, and this is the power of the Holy Spirit. He said the signs that will follow the believer. Look at the signs. This is what the church should be operating. This is the book of Acts. This is the 120 filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, in my name, whose name is it? Jesus. The name of Jesus. He said, you'll cast out devils. Yeah. And the devils are the things that really are causing the, the, the sicknesses and the, the pains and the frustrations. And however, they may have got there through deception, through our sin. The, however, they come. This is the, the responsibility of the church. To just cast out devils. Yeah. This yeah. is the word of God. Yeah. And he said you'll speak in new tongues. What's he talking about? He's talking about the baptism. Amen. The Holy Spirit yeah. wants to baptize yeah. you in the fire of God. Hallelujah. He wants to give you a prayer language. A, a prayer language that will, will edify your spirit. That will build you up. And, and give you another weapon in your arsenal. To, to be able to fight with. Ephesians 6.18. And the full gospel armor. You know one of those pieces. The, the seventh piece I believe is the praying in the spirit. Yeah. And it's something that the Holy Spirit just wants you to be open to. It's as he wills, but he wants that gift. I know that when we got filled with the Holy Spirit, the ministry, our own personal lives, it went to a, a different level. Amen. And we begin to see miracles, and we begin to see more healings, and more bolder with the gospel. And so God, God just wants to fill you with the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Yes, Jesus. And he said, you know, here in a time of persecution, he said, all these things that Nero's the persecuting Christians with. He said, now that you have the Holy Spirit, you have protection. Amen. You see, the Holy Spirit seals you. Amen. And when you're sealed, it's the mark of God Amen. that you're protected from all the things that are coming on the earth right now. Because you have the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. you are protected. And you don't have to worry about whatever the trick of the enemy is or whatever, you know, the reports of what they're trying to put in the water or trying to put in the food or what. Here's the promise. Yeah. The promise yeah. is yeah. that nothing is going to affect you. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah. Lord. Hallelujah. And he says, you lay hands. You. Say, that's me. <laughs> we'll lay hands on the sick. <laughs> And they will recover. Amen. That's the promise. I believe it. Yeah. I believe you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. I believe in miracles. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You've never changed. Yes, Glory to God. Thank you that you honor faith. Yes. And God wants you to come in faith. And God said that when you come to him, he said, I'm going to reward you. One last scripture, and we're going to step into the realm. We're going to get in the river this morning. Yes, Jesus. 
Because Jesus made this statement and he gave me revelation on it. He said to the Pharisees that they had, you know, a heart that they loved their own children. It's a natural thing. And he said, you know, you, you even know how to give good gifts, but how much more will your heavenly Father give yes, the right. Holy Amen. Spirit? Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Ask him. When's the last time you asked the Father for the Holy Spirit? Yeah. We said, well, I, I have the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Spirit when I believed upon Jesus. He'd come on the inside of me. And this is what the Lord began to show me. He began to show me a marriage. And he said in a marriage, there's a high level in your marriage, and God created sexual union. He created intimacy. And let me tell you, that is only for marriage. Amen. It's such a bomb that God put boundaries. And any kind of sexual activity outside of God, it is sin. And God would want you to repent of that because he made that holy. Because it's something that, that God wanted you to enjoy. And he said, just like the, the, the sexual union in marriage, he said, just because you're married and there's not much sexual union in your marriage, you're still married. Amen. He's saying, just because you're a Christian and, and, and the Holy Spirit's not really moving much in your life, you're still a Christian. But you haven't really honored the Holy Spirit because you've never talked to him. You've never asked for him. God wants to get intimate. He wants to take you to a, to a higher progression, to a higher level. And it's just truly <coughs> when you begin to honor him yeah. and when you begin to believe him. Yeah. That's yeah. what the Holy Spirit once that's how you activate the holy spirit in your life that's how you become intimate that's god's greatest desire in the relationship that we have that's why he gave the holy spirit and when you begin to acknowledge him you begin to ask him let me tell you he honors that honor and then he begins to give good gifts he begins to pour out his favor Yes. And he begins to stir up things in you. Hallelujah. And he begins to heal your body and touch your body. He yes. wants to take those headaches away. He wants to take those backaches away. He wants to take that pain from your feet and from your <laughs> legs. He wants to take that away. Amen. But you've got to come to him. That's always the, the invitation that God says, just come. Come into my presence. It's, it, it, you don't have to get intimate with me, but I want to get intimate with you. And I left that door open for you to come into. And if you come to me, if you talk to me, not, not to Pastor Dirk, not to anyone else, this is you and God. And God wants to do something in you when you present yourself. So just come and, and ask for the Holy Spirit. And then he'll begin to do what he knows is best. And how many of you know he, he's the, got the mind of God? He yeah. is God. Yeah. And, and he'll do that in you. So right. as, as we begin to worship this morning, I'm going to have Kelly just put some music on. And we're just going to worship the Lord. You can just stay right in your seat. And, and if you want to come forward, that invitation is there. God wants to do something in you. He wants to heal you. He wants to fill you, yeah, but yeah. he needs your surrender. God, God just says, I, I want to be intimate with you. Can, can, can you come to me and allow me to just touch you? It, it's not what you see. It, it's called faith. Faith in the invisible. Yeah. Faith in believing. God wants you to believe him. He wants to touch you and change you this morning. He wants to fill you with his presence, with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Let us worship the Lord. Glory to God.